Hello. Hello. Lazy door button. Yes. <laughs> never actual. gets old. That's, I was never about to put it, and I was like, why old. am I going to do that? <laughs> so, hello, and welcome to the Rolls-Royce Cullinan. Um, been dying to, to drive this for a long time. Had, had the honour of... Um, Bringing you guys an insight into when this car was unveiled. If you want to know all of the nitty gritty details, uh, I did do like a sort of in-depth walk around and chat inside the car that was static at uh, the Rolls-Royce factory in Goodwood. There's a link below there to all of that details. But today's about the drive. Well, I'm about to experience my first drive. You've had your drive. Absolutely. Um, so I thought rather than doing this individually, Sam and I did the Phantom 8 drive last year. Uh, which was literally this time to last the day, year. Which was thoroughly enjoyable. And I think it was better of having us both there um, uh, sort of ch chatting about it. So go. let's go and share our thoughts. Rolls-Royce don't like us calling it an SUV. It's a high-sided vehicle. High-sided vehicle. High-sided vehicle. That's, yeah. That is fantastic. <laughs> which, which is I cool. hadn't heard that. This thing has a V12 in it. I'd say it's pretty sporty. Yeah, <laughs> but oh, it's definitely sporty. And considering the fact that earlier we were sat on the swinging tailgate seats, we were. It's very utilitarian. It helps, the the scenery it? around here is the incredible. Scenery. The scenery and and the car helps us to sound a little bit more intellectual. Okay, I've right still got my seat now, so, so I'm, ready, I'm ready when you are. What sir. what is totally new and abstract about the journey we're about to do is that we have an off-road route. Yes. This morning, Sam drove us up and down a ski slope. How was that? What? It was nuts. <laughs> the, but what, you know what was nuts? It wasn't nuts in the sense like, wow, you can... It was nuts that we were doing it in a Rolls Royce. And that's the that's thing, right? That's the whole thing with this car I have found. Yeah. I took a photo, which I just posted on Instagram, going down a ski slope with the spirit of ecstasy in front of me. And that's the thing, right? Like so far, doing this in such majestic opulence. Oh, <laughs> he's been waiting to use that all day. all day. I'm gonna use my word, serenity. So, doing it in such serenity. serenity. Uh, as a quick overview, car shares pretty much the same engine from the Phantom. It's slightly different tune. Obviously, uh, the torque patterns and gearing is different because it's uh, designed to go off-road. Um, but thinking back to Phantom, it's incredible having experienced it off-road with you just now and now being on the road. Rolls-Royce refer to their on-road experience as the magic carpet ride. I would, I would share that. Yeah, I mean, oh, it, for it, sure. It's incredible. It just glides. Yeah. And as hopefully you're going to experience shortly when we get to some more off-road sections, is it does carry across somewhat mm -hmm. off-road. Obviously, it's still bumpy. You're going over yeah, rocks and boulders and, and things. Boulders. But it's you feel very comfortable whilst going across some quite horrific terrain. Um, you know, and it's so quiet, and you're like, are we really off-road? Or might it's on a bit of a bumpy road? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I think we have a few more minutes until we reach the off-road station and we'll bring you along for that ride first-hand to explain in as many descriptive words as possible <laughs> what it's like to take uh, a very expensive uh, high-sided vehicle off the beaten path. Okay, so here we are. Moment of truth. <laughs> Moment. I mean, arguably, this is kind of where it gets quite un rolls Royce -y, really. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? uh, this is the part where it's very surprising to see a Rolls-Royce. So, Rolls-Royce's theme that runs through this is effortless everywhere. And I think then it's all to do with that one button. So there's one single button. I mean, there are multiple settings within it, but there's an off-road button which, um, well, appropriately, adapts it for off-road. Yeah, <laughs> so I actually love that It yes. is so good. I mean, normally, I mean, off-road purists are like, oh no, but we, you know, you can lock this diff yeah, and change exactly. this gear oh, yeah. ratio. I like the idea, idea of just one button. Yeah, so do I. It makes it cool. a lot simpler, because even, uh, dare we name competition? Am I on I, your video? I, Am I... I think we do. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, Range Rovers, Ben yeah. Tegas, anything like that, do have so many Multiple different... settings. And my dad yeah. owned Range Rovers his entire life. Yeah. Uh, it still doesn't know what any of them do, and you know <laughs> when it's raining, he puts his car into snow mode. Amazing. Like he, you know, I mean, for I, sure. And he's like, oh, I can feel the difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, but on the bullet point checklist of features it has, it looks amazing. Oh all, yeah. Look at all these multiple traction modes. But this makes complete one sense. Button. One button. Like that. Yeah. So I believe when you press off-road mode, the ride height of the car 
uh, jumps up by 40 mil. Yep. Which is, that's substantial. That's like, a big... That's some ground clearance. Yeah. Now, what I love about Rolls-Royce and I think one thing that sort of sets them apart is like most companies are like, oh, we've, we've saved weight here and we've done this to make it lighter and whatever. I love how Rolls-Royce are proud about how much sound deadening they do. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we exactly. wedged another 100 kilograms of sound deadening in this car. <laughs> we <laughs> even put it in the tires. Yeah. You know, like. I mean, case in point, there is a, a piece of glass in the back that separates the boot from the driver's sort of section so that heaven forbid if anyone was to load luggage in the back it would spoil the tranquility of the car it's so they put this glass in the back genius. it's my favorite feature it's of so the good. whole car but it has meant that on occasions i've gone to the boot to get something out of our bags and you'd be like can you get me a camera and all i'm seeing is <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you're saying but no, the amazing. cool thing is we are traversing this say by convention pretty rough terrain in pretty i mean it's pretty effortless man i mean granted it's bumpy yeah i mean you're you're going with some haste i would say yeah, it's a confident are. uh speed that you're carrying well the thing is that as we are in fantastic comfort and luxury in a rolls royce but going places where previously you couldn't do in this kind of vehicle and i'm not someone who chases off-road trails i'm not someone who does no. much of that but i like a luxury car and i like the fact that i could do this in, should, yeah. should i own this vehicle like how cool would you be turning up to, I don't know what, a, a tough mudder <laughs> off-roading day. Everyone's there in their defenders, the oh. you just turn up in this. You know, if you were going for a spot of grouse shooting, sir, uh, you know, you might want to... Hey, if that's, I don't quite know where... Traverse yeah. the Scottish Highlands. Sure. In your Uber chariot. <laughs> <laughs> then set up your cool. deck chairs out the yeah. back. Well, speaking of out the back, one thing, again, that is uh, setting this level of car apart is the level of customization you can apply to the rear of this car. So they are classing the rear of this car as the third box. So in designer language, the, the engine compartment, that's the first box. Where we're sitting, the second box, and the uh, boot area, they have allocated its own box, its own designated space. And instead of just having it empty as an area you can throw bags in, you can pretty much uh, tailor make a utility to fit in the back. So if, if you're into golf, you might have something to fit your golf bags. But the main thing is that you can do what you want. It's not a sort of set template. You know what I mean? Imagine the stuff. I Imagine think it's what's fantastic. gonna come out of that place. The thing is, uh, last night they presented this car as the Rolls Royce of SUVs, but, but what I actually like about it is it's more the, it's it's just so incredibly Rolls Royce. <laughs> you know, like, they haven't, they've done it in their own peculiar and amazing way, in particular way. It's so bespoke. Yeah. It's so, oh, that's a big old. That is, that is a quite way. a whole, hey. oh, here You is. wouldn't do that in your Phantom, would you? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be rocking on it. Still like it's this. funny because this morning when we got in the car, we were like, not, not dissimilar to a Phantom, really. Now it's really shining. Now it's shining. <laughs> and you do sit a bit high. Like, I think from the outside, if you were yeah. just glancing at it from the front, you could be, you could easily mistake it for a Phantom. Mm -hmm. But sitting in it, you sit up higher, and I, I have to say, I don't, I don't think the dash in the interior mm -hmm. is as nice as a Phantom, but I know that that's because the Phantom is yeah, really... Yeah, I mean, really, it's kind of flattering this thing that we are comparing it with Phantom. Sure, is there any you know, reason why you're flagship? riding this Yeah, I just, so I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying it out. Sure, no, I'm okay. just testing it's it out. If you, want to, if, you want to, if you want to drop down here, that's Yeah, cool. let's just stay on yeah. the tracks, you know, like, yeah, it's an off-road mobile, <laughs> but it's still a lovely Rolls Royce, and I don't want to just get right, killed cool. by any snakes coming to my door. So, if you're specking one of these, what's your spec? Oh, that's hard, isn't it? I still, I still don't know if I love the way it looks. Uh, yeah. I think, I think it's a bit. I like it from the back. Is I it like a grower? It, from the back. Is it a grower? It might be a grower. It's very spec dependent. I think, I think so I think as well. Different colours in terms of paint really transform the visuals of the car, and I can't work out whether it's light paint, dark paint, whatever. Um, here we go. Here we go. The nicest one I think <laughs> I've seen has been a dark blue one. Okay. Um, with a lighter interior, but I would go, I would make it super utility focused. Okay. I wouldn't so go So you would go for locks. bench setup in the back? I would go bench. Folding seats. I'd probably take these carpets out. Like I would yeah. just, because if you're buying one of these, you're just so rich, you might as well just and be rich about it and just abuse it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, if you're going to be rich about it, you might as well have the, the Lux set up. No, you know? keep that for 
a phantom. You're going to okay. have both. You're going to have both. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, course. I think, you know, I just love the idea of like, that's like a roof rack on one of these. I don't think you can put one on, but. I'm sure Rolls would make I'm one. I'm sure for they you. would. Seriously. You know, just, you know, and do it like a Sahara cross Sahara. Put yeah. some rally lights on the so grill. You want like a Dakar inspired. That's what I'm like. Okay. Dakar Lux, you darling. You spoil my reveal video, <laughs> but I've ordered a Dakar <laughs> cut of them. It's coming soon to see. <laughs> Amazing. Evidently, so we have swapped drives now. Uh, Sam is shoving me back to Jackson Hole. Uh, interestingly, this is probably, let's face it, where these cars are going to get used the most, actually, on asphalt. Yes, <laughs> un unfortunately, I think that's the, the real situation. Um, actually, we, we don't have an official price point on these yet. Despite no. us being at the launch, we haven't been given an official price point. I'm estimating, a, with a spec, they're going to be coming in at like 280, 290, yeah. something like that. They are sitting under Phantom but we haven't been given a concrete price yet. I guess the variables are such that it's it's so customizable and spec dependent that the sky's the limit. These That's things. exactly it. Yeah. I think you could go absolutely mad and create something that costs a ton of curve. <laughs> a fortune. One major USP, I guess, is the fact that I can't think of another luxury SUV with a V12 in it. I can't think of that's, another SUV full stop. Yeah. That is huge. Like, and it does have, it's incredible, isn't it? It's over 800 like meter meters of torque. Yeah, hill climb. And this is the first time we've had this on some like dynamic driving roads. And it's good. It's actually all right. Like for the size understand. of it. Yeah. So one thing we haven't mentioned is that this is also fitted with rear wheel steer. Now on here, I don't, I'm not driving, so I can't tell you how that, that makes feels. It a bit more agile. Yeah, but yeah. certainly, whack dear. <laughs> but oh, certainly, yeah, dear. Um, when we were taking those super tight turns going slowly when we were off road, that really helped. Like, virtually sh shrinks the wheelbase. It's very cool. Because it, this is a big car. Sure. It is huge. Um, but yeah, the V12 in a luxury SUV. It's quite that's a cool a, thing to that's say. That's a pretty cool thing. I can't think of anything else. Comment below if you guys are aware of a more modern day luxury SUV maybe there's something in the US market that we don't know yeah. about uh, that has a V12 let us know because that for me is one of the main selling points of this car really agreed I'm gonna uh, take this opportunity to call it a day as I mentioned at the beginning if you want some really detailed info on this car I did do a full uh, walk and talk uh, when this car was first unveiled so the link to that is below Sam is also making a video about this car so the link to his video is also below and uh, as always thank you so much for watching and we shall see you next time ciao